Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE for IBM Interconnect. Go to interconnectgo.com for the social experience, go social. New theme this year, everyone is in there, all the VIP influencers led by Veronica Belmont. The Cube is headlining there, we got crowd chats, we got all the crowd data. That's where all the social action happens. If you're, not, if you're watching this live stream, you want to go in and inter interact and engage, go there. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with Dave Vellante, my co-host. Our next guest is Doug Baylog, GM, IBM Power Systems. Welcome back to The Cube. John, it's great to be back. Uh, we'll have a chance to chat with you guys. We uh, love chatting with you. Last time, Power Systems, Power Rate, yeah. You know, all this is going on, it's a transformative market, yep. big stakes on the table for yep. IBM. Give us a quick update on the report card. Are you, are you happy with the results? Right. What's happened, what's happening, and where's the vector for you guys here? Yeah, great. It, it's been a busy 12, 18 months. In fact, you'll remember when we chatted a little over a year ago, we were sort of just at the cusp of announcing Power8. Before that, we were making promises galore, right? It was about, <laughs> we're bringing Linux to the platform, we're bringing Watson to the platform, we're bringing KVM, power is going to be great. And then we started to really bring that to market in April of uh, last year, right, with our scale-out servers, followed by in October our scale-up servers. But it's not just about the hardware. It's what those systems and solutions do to really help clients attack the big data problem and, and move into the cloud. And open power, oh my gosh. I mean, if you would have predicted a year later we'd have 100 members of yeah. the Open Power so, Foundation. So back up on that. Let's just take us open power, where it was, what was it? What was right. the, the genesis of it? Yep. Just take us through quickly, because the trajectory's been pretty impressive. Yeah, it has Adoption been Adoption really is, endorsement is, you know, when a Barney deal, you see a few people hanging around, yeah. and we love each other. When you have that kind of adoption, that's just right. take us through the genesis and kind of the, the yeah. how that's kicking so up. So the genesis of open power started really back with an industry fundamental that the days of Moore's Law are gone, right? Which used to be, because of technology benefits, transistors would shrink, and therefore you get double the compute capacity every two years. That was the premise of Moore's Law. So really applications saw performance gains every generation of system. Laws of physics are now causing that to change. And, and what ourself, Google, Mellanox, Tyan, a motherboard company, and, and, and NVIDIA saw about, a, about two years ago was it needed to think differently about application gains. So we got together and we said, you know what, it's going to take a community. And what does that sound like? That sounds like open source software. Yeah. Why don't we open source the hardware platform for the next generation of cloud? And that sort of began the journey of the Open Power Foundation. So over a, over a year ago, we had five members with a vision. And now since then, we've formed the Open Power Foundation. We kind of had our coming out party in April of last year around that. And as you said, the membership has grown to over 100 members. But it's not just about membership. It's about real things happening in the industry. And what timetable was that 100 members now, over 100? Just a, just a few weeks ago here at Partner World, actually, we had our 100th member, a business partner, sign up. So, uh, and it's amazing. Over the it's course of a year, or two years, uh, even at the eight months, what yeah, was the time actually, table? It, we formed the Open Power Foundation in December, officially as a legal 13. entity, December of 2013. 13, yeah. And then here we are, just a little over a year later, yeah. with 100 members. Yeah, 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 yeah. Industry significant names, that's, too, that's, right? That's big, big time. Um, but as I was going to say, it, it's not just about membership, it's about what is the membership doing to innovate. Yeah. So in that time period, you've seen us with NVIDIA and Mellanox bring out systems to market that the Department of Energy in the United States have chosen for the next generation research labs. Things that will be deployed in 2017 that are fundamental breakthroughs in the way in which uh, you know, DOV, Department of Energy, research will be done. So two out of the three national labs will start using the power roadmap with our partnerships of open power to progress forward. We see cloud wins in significant cloud vendors, besides the work with Google obviously that continues as chairman, with OVH in Europe, one of the largest cloud providers in Europe. And recently in December, Rackspace announced their intention as a member of the Open Power Foundation to start shifting from Intel to Power, leveraging new work around the Open Compute platform, bringing Power8 into Open Compute. So, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to apps, right? So it comes down to apps. What are you guys right. doing to sort of and, and list that application yeah. ecosystem. Maybe talk about some of the changes that are going on. Yeah, there. so one of the fundamental uh, decisions we made was to, as we bring Linux in a first class manner to the Power Platform, to make it the same, the same, the same. So it's KVM, just like you know, kernel, virtual, uh, kernel, kernel virtualization across the Intel platform. It's little Indian Linux. 
a little bit gorpy, right? But what does little India mean? It means that applications written on, in, on Linux on Intel will now move without change to Linux on power. And that's a huge opening up of the aperture. So my conversation with ISVs has completely changed, David. Completely changed. It used to be a pay to port model. Now the porting's the easy part. And they're figuring out new ways to optimize around power that gives them an advantage over their competitors. An example would be Redis Labs. Red is very popular, you know, key value store, sure. no SQL in the cloud. They've optimized around Power8 with Linux. They see a 24 to one consolidation benefit of the number of servers needed on Power8 versus Intel. Why? More memory. More memory, faster memory, faster access to data. So let's, let's talk about that. Let's stay on that business value for yeah. a minute. So I'm consolidating. Right. That means um, throwing, what, less cores at the, at the same problem? Less servers, less cores, less, less energy, so it's easier less to space, manage. less people, right. less, less, less. Okay, and, and that ripples through to my software license and maintenance All of those costs. things, all those things. It's huge cost savings, it really is. And again, 24 to one sounds like, well, you have one rack, but if you think about the cloud model, this is racks and racks of compute, racks and racks of data centers that people are deploying for these new data-rich applications. So when you can consolidate 240 to 10, you know, 2400 to uh, you know, 100. That's a that's a big savings. Well, I wanted to ask you about the apps, the the, the workloads too. So you, you talked about, you know, gave an example of Department of Energy, right. a lot right. of R and D stuff going on, but yeah. there's big data too. That's right. Um, I wonder if you could talk about what you've done with DB2 Blue yep. um, and other sort of analytics-driven apps. A absolutely, and, and you hit it right on the head. The sweet spot for power in the marketplace is big data, whether it be delivered on premises or in the cloud, and now the software and cloud. Why big data? It's the way in which the Power A processor was designed for big data. So the kind of apps we're seeing clients look at is things like in-memory databases. DB2 Blue is a great example, which was optimized when it was designed starting three, five years ago for the Power architecture, for the Power A architecture. Ourselves and DB2 Blue had a great year last year in terms of new footprint placements, the placements of displacements of Oracle and other competitive databases. So that combination of benefit where we see 82 times performance gains 82 times, when, a, when you can do analytics 82 times faster, it completely changes clients' business models. You know, that monthly report you used to do, you used to dread doing, you can now do it almost real time, almost daily, right? Because it's available to run that much faster. So DB2 Blue, in memory, big place for us. But also the unstructured data. Whether you look at, you know, MongoDB, I talked about Redis Labs, that whole sort of set of uh, unstructured data structures run really, really well on Linux on power. That is the sweet spot for Power8. Well, it's it, I mean, just the, the, that's a tailwind for you guys because ever since I've been in this business, mm -hmm. people have underestimated the amount of data yeah. that they're going to have to ingest, and then now we're seeing the curve steepen. Steepen. I mean, it's right. early days still, right? Yeah, it is early days. So, it's, what's happening? I mean, it's amazing to me. People have said, I mean, even Spark, right? Yeah. Spark is still going, right? People said Spark's dead, Power's dead, but now there's like a resurgence. Right. Why, why is that? Why are people looking for that alternative? Yeah, it, it, it comes back to, um, you know, I started with this discussion around Moore's Law, where you know, Intel has been sort of on this path of, you know, they, own, uh, they believe they own the server market and they're the single innovator, right? They're the only one making GP out of the whole thing, mm -hmm. right? But the marketplace is looking for best choices. You know, best choices as they look for how to integrate that stack around you know, addressing the big data needs. Power is a great choice for that, right? But we had to change the way it was consumed. So you can still buy and will buy forever, right? A Power Edge server and the roadmap from IBM. But opening up the aperture through the Open Power Foundation lets the ecosystem build out, right? So Open Power is not just hardware companies. It's software companies, it's system companies, it's IO companies, and it's clients. Uh, who are sort of building out that ecosystem and star bursting the benefits of power. So that's a big business model. Big business model change, right? Um, and really the only one out there with that business It's kind of model. similar to the ARM model, you could argue. Yeah, right? In terms go, of right. uh, how we've sort of taken our, you know, the ARM model yeah, and said, and you know, let's apply it to, to the, the enterprise. enterprise space, right? Right, uh, and, and so, okay, so you, you, got, you got that going and now, where do you see this all going, Doug? Where yeah. do you want to take it? What's your vision? Yeah, so I think you know, if you look at all we've done last year to transform the power business, we opened it up, we repositioned the conversation, we brought power aid solutions to the market, and we did that in stages, right? We did the scale out first, one and two socket systems in April, and how did that do? So in, you know, second quarter was a transition quarter, third quarter last year we started to see single digit growth in our scale out space, fourth quarter over 20% growth. In fourth quarter, then we introduced our scale up systems, our sort of large footprint entities, right? Much more of our traditional capability. And that was a transition quarter in fourth quarter. So if I put it all together, I think 2015 is poised to be a great year for the power platform. We've got new trends of workload through the open play. 
We've got our full portfolio out there with uh, Power A for scale out and Power A for scale up. And we're seeing you know, wins as I described in Linux and in the Open Power Foundation. So I couldn't be more excited where, where we find ourselves coming into 2015. Okay, so if you had, so you got scale out system, scale up system, and the overall power platform, those are the yeah. key high level conversation yeah. That's right. marks that you're saying. What's the, for you right now, what is the top conversation you're having with customers? Because yeah. you know, we want to try to join the conversation. Absolutely. That's what everyone says, join the conversation. What is that conversation right now that you're having with yeah. customers, with partners, that is the most relevant? Yeah, so it, it really comes back to what we've hit on already. In fact, I'll reflect on my meetings you know, from today and <laughs> yesterday, right? It, it comes Tape back quarters, to, come on. Yeah, it really comes back to two topics, which are top of mind for clients. One is, they're all drowning in data. They're trying to figure out how do they get business value out of this volume of data that keeps coming at them faster and faster. And do they have the right infrastructure to deliver analytics and insight around that data? That's one problem area that we are having lots and lots of conversations around and power's a great fit for. Mm -hmm. The other is the conversation related to that of do they deliver that services on premises or do they deliver that services in the cloud? And then the fact that they can now with software, in addition to our other partnerships wins, start to deliver that power set of systems of engagement and systems of insight in the software yeah. cloud, that sort of starts to stitch it all together from a hybrid IT. No one talks about how they collect the cash for that value that they create, but, yes. but this brings up the good point. Systems of engagement mm -hmm. and systems of record. Bob Picciano's going to come on tomorrow. That's he right. He really kind of, you guys are the first ones to really nail this. Yep. Decoupled, right. completely different. So big data, drowning in data. Data lakes are very powerful, mm. okay? Smart people talk about the data ocean. Right, right. right. <laughs> well, that's us. Smart people like John <laughs> That's the cube. <laughs> no, so we've just this new concept. Google actually validated it in the, um, the top guys yep. at Google. So they were like, well, data lakes are batch. Yep. They could be big, like, like the big right. lakes. But oceans are unpredictable. You can predict some weather forecast, but right. you never know. You never Real know. Real time, you never in know. processor analytics. Right. So those two worlds are going on. What's your take on that? I mean. That's a big thing. How, is, how are you guys going to keep up with that for the customers? Yeah, I mean. so it, it comes down to, we've got to build out the ecosystem. You know, it's funny, as I've had the power strategy conversation with hundreds of clients over the last year, honestly, I've never had a client say, you know what, Doug, I think your strategy for power is wrong. But at the <laughs> end of that conversation, what they do say is, okay, yeah. I'm with you, Doug. Now let's talk about my applications. Where yeah. are my what's applications? Yeah, what's in it for me? How do my applications, are they ported yeah. yet? Are they optimized yet? And the good news is we've made a lot of progress. We have over 1,200 Linux ISVs on the platform growing every day. We have hundreds of thousands of open source packages. But again, when somebody hands you a list of 1,000 ISVs, chances are right now there's still a few missing. And we're knocking them down one client at a time in terms of what's missing in that list, some from IBM, some from the industry. So the great news is we can see this building, we can see the momentum building, but it's, it's back to the yeah, ISVs so and the software. So, this, so, you know, so without <laughs> that ecosystem, you know, you're, you're left there with a great platform. You're in a cul-de-sac right, so with no, you know. <laughs> yeah. I got to ask you though, so, so as a Patriots fan, it's, it's, it's good to be lucky. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, and it's good to be good. It's good to be so good, So yes. you're good or you're lucky, you're sort of both. But so, I've seen the stats, where you've, you, you've seen, I've seen all the systems lined right. up, and, and Z is the most reliable, yeah, yeah. most available, and then power's right there next to it, and yep. then sort of everybody else. Are the requirements changing? Um, we talked about data, yeah. that's fortuitous. Right. Um, or did you guys sort of deliberately, are you, are you building things in to affect that change? I wonder if you could talk about that. Yeah, so as, as I sort of peel back the three systems we talked about, systems of records, systems of insight, and systems of engagement, underneath each of those are different system requirements from a hardware standpoint right. to be successful in those models, right? It's not sort of, you know, one, one cookie cutter, you know, size what kind of. What was the third one? System of engagement, system of record? And systems insight. of insight, okay, got it, right? Got where it. the analytics runs, it, uh, John. It. So if I think about each of those, there are different characteristics of how those hardware systems are built. You know, one, one example has been, you know, as we've worked with these various cloud providers, they each have a standard for their data center. Each of their standards are different, by the way which is why it was so important for us through the Open Power Foundation to enable this whole ODM market. So as we bring power to software, they're going to source servers just like they source the x86 servers today. Not through my IBM, they're going to source it through the ODMs in Taiwan, right? It, but it's going to be their standard for how software or data centers looks. Software or data center looks. Rackspace, as I mentioned, a different standard. They have the open compute model. Google, they have their own standard, right? I mean, you just got to go down the line yeah. and standards are meant to simplify operations for a data center. That doesn't mean it's standards across everybody. And, and I've got to be able to have power be in each of those standards. Part of it comes back to what's going to run on them. If you're going to run engagement applications and software, 
those are going to have different hardware attributes, different system attributes than that system to record that you know really final version of the truth that sits on a client's floor. That they're not willing to let that data go. So I've known you for a while. You, you you're not afraid of competition. Um, right. At the same time, this industry is the, the, the it's the competition right. question. That's well, right. What are those discussions like? Because it's really interesting. You're selling the cloud providers. You guys are going at it hard yeah. with 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 SoftLayer. We live in a really interesting you know yeah. business these yeah. days. We, we do. In part, it's like a cartel. Other times, it's like this you know guerrilla war. What's, <laughs> what's going on? What are those discussions like? Yeah. So you know the thing they find with IBM is I mean we've been at this for 103 plus years, right? So I mean we've kind of matured our approach to how we deal with co-opetition. There's no doubt the cloud companies I'm working with, as I provide technology to them, they, some of them do see software as a competitor. But they're also all looking for ways in which they differentiate themselves. All of them having just a generic Intel approach, that's not going to cut it for them in terms of differentiation. So that's why having a different set of infrastructure that has more innovation through the open power community will allow them to differentiate th themselves more. So my view is those who move with us faster will see a first mover advantage. Yeah, so put it out there and th let everybody compete on the merits of their own sort of strategies, assets, Absolutely. relationships. And, and the, the more uh, innovation I can help create through the mic. community, the better choices that it provides to the cloud companies in terms of what markets are they going after, what clients are they targeting, and how do they take advantage of this sort of uh, Lego approach to, the, to innovation. So the, the, I want to have the open source discussion too. I mean, yeah. IBM obviously has a lot of credibility right. when it comes to open source. You know, Linux sort of, I guess, started it all, and, yeah. and we've seen a lot more since then. Um, but the, but open source and the hardware side's a little different. It is a little um, different. You mentioned uh, you know, ARM is a, sort of yeah. a similar model. OCP, I guess, is sort of an, an, an example. Yeah. But, yeah. but so how has that been? What have you learned? Anything surprised you about that? Uh, you know, what, I think the only thing that surprised us is probably what we knew already, which is, you know, we're sort of always like, well, who's going to take advantage of open source firmware? So we've released the firmware that makes the PowerAid server you know, run. And we said, well, who's really going to grab that? And now you say, well, all these ODMs in, in the, the Asian market who build servers are grabbing that firmware to customize it for the servers they're building for the cloud market. So, you know, we, we basically validated what we knew already, although it's sort of new applied principles in the, ser the hardware space is open source does win at the end of the day. Open wins, close, lo close well, it's loses. Perfect for the ODMs who don't have the development resource or the his That's historical right. perspectives yeah. to really be do that. Now, of course, Open source, you get open source to expand your market, which That's is right. one of the benefits. Yep. The other is sort of reduction in, 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 in expense, R&D expense. Well, and the and other is security that. and confidence, right? Because it's fuel, uh, completely transparent. There's certainly no shortage of discussions that we can all read in press headlines today about countries and companies that are worried about the IT they deploy and how secure it is. So having open source where it's fully transparent allows them to innovate on top of it but also completely see what code's being deployed. So but that's th the fact that it's not a black box, that's you're saying, right. is making certain factions more comfortable. Yeah, I mean, one of the successes we've had has been Power 8 and Open Power in China, right? If you think about things that have been formed there, the China Power Technology Alliance, they formed a whole alliance around companies in China to leverage Open Power because of the focus there on uh, localized IT and security. Uh, it's a perfect fit for that market. Right, so if you think about open power, really three markets. The cloud companies we've talked about, technical computing we've seen with our Department of Energy win, and other companies like that that'll be coming, and then the, uh, the localized indigenous development, which we see in China is kind of leading that conversation. So those really are the, kind of the three use cases around open power, cloud, technical computing, and localized IT. So talk about the system of engagement. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck on this in my head. Okay. I, I think this is a tr genius strategy. Insights yeah. come from all this. Right. But the, they, they work together. Yes. What does that mean for a customer? Is it to mm -hmm. the edge of the network? Is it internet of things? Right. Is it, what is the end point yep. of engagement? Because the data is different, right? That's why we've we mm -hmm. been riffing on this whole ocean thing because yeah. like, it's not just the lake, it's like there's a lot of real time stuff mm -hmm. happening in memory. Right. It can be slow, fast. Yeah, so if you think about, uh, and you know, we, we've talked about this a lot here already at the Interconnect, which is if you think about a sort of a blue mix application that's going to be kind of the framework by which you stitch together these rapid pieces, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a tremendous insight into a client's existing database about their customer set, their buying patterns, right? Their history of investments, right? All that stuff sits there, and they want to marry it with the world of social. Right, they want to kind of take and that mobile. history and, and mobile, all right? aspects of connected and, data, right? right? And, and so what we've announced is within that Bluemix application set, you can now connect quickly to that back end, 
through a set of Bluemix connectors that rapidly expose that data, if you want, into a Bluemix application that pulls from the history, that pulls from the records, a uh, final version of the truth of the customer data, with that so social mobile world data that exists of sentiment analysis out in, uh, you know, as we struck the relationship with Twitter as an example yeah. around data. So it, it's a great way to kind of stitch these things together and create a whole 360 degree view of a, of a, of a customer. And that's a huge trend we're seeing, just bringing the, the transaction systems and the analytics that's systems right. together. And obviously you need a hardware platform to enable that, right? Well, you need a variety of hardware platforms, right? You, need, you still need yeah. the systems of record that mm -hmm. are you know, sitting on a client's floor today that they're, you know, they sort of you know, have their arms around, right? And then you need the engagement systems running in the cloud that can scale up and scale down very rapidly, right, with full transparency to run those engagement workloads, which are different workloads. They're just connecting to the back end. You yeah, know, I was yeah. telling the story, on my way here yesterday, I had to pay my visa bill. So at 30,000 feet in the air, I'm you know, clicking on my, you know, my tablet, connected to Wi-Fi in the plane, <laughs> and paid my visa Bill. Well, I mean, and of course, I could be sniffing the signal before it goes out to the Wi-Fi, but then again, <laughs> that's the security, brings up security <laughs> in memory. Well, but you, you know, you got to have that, that secure connection. Infrastructure so the way in which matters, right? Infrastructure yes. matters, <laughs> absolutely. So <laughs> as you connect to the back end, you've got to have It's got to be smarter interface. infrastructure, Dave. You know, if you want to really go there. <laughs> yeah, that's right, okay. exactly no, but right. So yeah, let's talk about IoT. I think, yeah, I, think, I think the land grab is this engagement this discussion, because that data yeah. is changing. Yep. You factor in all kinds of geo data. Jeff Jonas is always on the queue talking about geospatial. The diversity of tsunami of data coming right. in yep. at the edge yep. is ridiculous. I mean, it's so ridiculous. I think huge opportunity. And that marriage the with the data that exists. Yeah, I mean, it's a great marriage point right there. Yeah, so how do I get the real time, get the old data from the data lake into yep. this real time layer? I think it's a huge opportunity. Yep. I think it's going to be a great, I think you guys are on the right track. I still it's wide open. I mean, it's not even it's wide the open. first inning, I, in my opinion. Okay, yep. cool. Um, what's the coolest thing you've seen around the power rate, open power, power systems with customers that you can share with the folks out there. Anecdotally, it could be like use case, yeah. um, experience. Yeah, so, so a couple examples uh, from, from two recent meetings, and it, you sort of know you've sort of got the star bursting effect. So uh, I was over in China a couple weeks ago meeting with a variety of uh, customers and provincial governments. Uh, to my surprise, we're sitting down one of our one of our partners there, and we didn't even know. They brought out a whole, hey, we're going to launch this family of open power servers on Power8. Didn't know it, didn't know it was coming, it was, it was like, great. I mean, it's Since just. you're here, we're just letting you know. Yeah, yeah right. thanks for coming, right? <laughs> thanks for the flyby. And by. so, you know, <laughs> it, it was an example, John, of how when you're in this community, things happen without you having to know about it, and that's what sort of creates new innovation. Another example was that two weeks ago, I was here at Partner World. I was meeting with one of our largest distributors who's a member of the Open Power uh, Foundation, and they had a you know, sort of new senior leader in the meeting with me who was asking me questions about Open Power. Before I could start answering, his own team started pitching to him why it was so important for them to be in open power because they could bring differentiation through package solution offerings. So they're excited. Yeah, yeah. so again, my, my two examples are making the point of this thing is star bursting out and it's starting to build on itself without IBM having to sort of shepherd everybody around, which is clearly the measure of success in my mind. Well, Doug, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it, spend the time. Um, what's your plans for this event? You back to back to back briefings, so you're going to watch it. You going to go see Aerosmith? I am absolutely going to go see Aerosmith. <laughs> uh, you know, having grown up with them, it's, uh, I think we all have, right? Yeah, uh, I'm really wait. looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of great client Aerosmith's meetings. Aerosmith's a live band here for their party, so uh, just FYI. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. It, it's wait. a lot of great client meetings. I've already had some, I can't wait to have the other ones. I mean, yeah. we really are hitting that stride here with power, and I can feel the momentum, John and uh, David, as we march our way through yeah. to 2015. It you will know, be you, the year we grow, I can you see You guys that. have taken a lot of hit in the press on the financial, but there's a transformation. You can sometimes take a step back to go forward, but you know, messaging is great, but then it comes down to delivery, like you said. That's right. Everything's hanging together, yep. right? I want that suit, it's on the rack, I want to buy that, that. That's Looking good. good. Looking good off the team, middle of the fairway. Now it's, 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 it's the next It's level. time to deliver the final results, but right. uh, we're well poised after um, a really, you know, uh, challenging year of transformation last year, but uh, I think we're through, I think we've got the message out there, we've got the right offerings, we've got the partners engaged and excited, and we've got clients coming up with bold ideas. Well, so. you put the pieces together. I mean, we were sort of rattling yeah. off before, Linux, Red Hat, you know, KVM. Yeah, open uh, stack know. for management. Uh, I mean, a lot of the pieces are now there, right? So really that's got to be, it's got to be satisfying. I mean, you help write a lot of the, the plans and strategies. Right, and, right. You know, and you see them come to fruition. So, yeah. we were talking earlier, it's, you know, when IBM takes some time, sometimes it takes a while, but when you guys focus, you go after yeah, it hard. People march on, yeah. that, on that line. Yeah. Um, final question, just as we got a little more time here, I want to ask you, just kind of, as an industry vet, participant, yeah. IBM executive, been there, done that through many cycles, what's your feeling of the impact of open source? I mean, IBM's been involved in open source. You could yeah. be going back to 
Gen 1. Some can argue what Gen 1 was, but you right. know, I'm going to be 50 this year, so yep. you know, I remember those early days, you right. guys were part of that with Linux, et cetera. It seems to have changed the world in yeah. all aspects. With open power, again, one data point. We were just at a big data SVR event with, right. with uh, Hadoop World. Um, it's everywhere, it's now mainstream, yep. tier one. Right. How has it changed the world from a business model impact? Yep. And how do you see it continuing? Do you see it's not stopping, or what's your take on that? No, I, I, I mean, Open Power is a great example of how it's not stopping and finding ways to bring that open source software model into the hardware business. So, uh, you know, new business models being created around this. And that's kind of the, the trick. I mean, yeah, it kind of starts around the technology idea of how to get sort of pervasive community adoption and innovation around them, but it also requires new business models. And that's what we've had to do with Open Power, you know, not just the technology part, but how do we create that IP licensing model, right? That allows for derivative rights and derivative manufacturing and the whole open source of the firmware I described. And what do you put in and what do you put out? I think, you know, we've at IBM sort of taught ourselves time and time again that, as I mentioned earlier, open wins and close loses. And uh, we're seeing that example and play out And for a multinational here. global company like IBM to be so driven by change by open source, yeah. you got to look at that and think, you can't help but think like, you know, the movement of the decade or the century, yeah. or the century is open source. I mean, right. it's just ridiculous how bad, how awesome this is creating disruption. You know, a lot of folks look at IBM and you know, look at us and say, well, geez, you know, how come you guys can't do it all? I mean, that's just, the world of uh, IT is moving so fast right now with bold yeah. ideas under millennials, right, that are 20 some years in age. Why in the world would you want to say, no, no, I got it all, I can do it myself, thanks for asking. You really want yeah. to open it up so that you get just this incredible, uh, yeah. Swell lift. of innovate lift occurring. Well, right? Wikinomics. Well, we, well, Dave, well, Dave wasn't. Dave couldn't make it last week to our event because he got snowed in. But last week we made the observation: Why are these new foundations working? Right. The old pure open source, like the yeah. Red Hats, are pure, as we all know that. Mm -hmm. But they admittedly said on the cube, but that's never going to work. Some open source dogma could be: Well, right. this is never going to work. Is it? We didn't do it before that way, JBoss or whatever it was. Right. right. Yeah. Um, but now they're working. So the the thing that we're watching is. Is the evolution of always connected, mobile, yeah. social, does that change the transparency equation? I think it causes there's no it place to, move, to hide. I think it causes it to move faster. I, I think that's the reality check is when you have so many trends hitting you at, at you know at amazing speed, right? Data, cloud, you know, social, mobile, security, all those things coming at you. Man, if you try to do it in the troll traditional mo waterfall model, you, you're dead. And you've got to experiment. You've got to move fast. You've got to do it with you others. Guys, you guys, among other companies, will be. Will be Brand, oh, they're trying to hijack something. But when it's done in the open, there's yeah. no place to hide. There's no place there's to hide. There's no place to hide. So that, and with the acceleration, no yep. place to hide, yep. it's truly in the open. Right. So to me, I'm looking at that trend saying, hmm, I think open source concepts will mm -hmm. escalate and change. Yeah. So we're watching all these foundations. And then you, you continue to build value on top of it. I mean, there, there's still plenty of room in this yeah. space for value creation, right, on top of open source. And you see that every day in what clients do and what we do to take open source yeah. and then add that next layer of uh, really industry-oriented analytics around it as an example. Yeah, and we would always, OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, well, we didn't comment on yours, but those two in particular, mm -hmm. yeah. when we saw it become more of a marketing program, we were like very, hey, you know, I'm in the queue. Right. Don't yeah. go that way. And what happened was, ship with code. Right. Ship with technology what you're doing with open yes. power. That changed the game for. It's a game changer. It's, you know, it just changes the argument, not yeah. the conversation. It really has. Doug, great to have you on theCUBE as always. So this is theCUBE, we'll be right back. Doug Baylog, GM of the IBM Power Systems Division here in live in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE. In the Go Social Lounge where it's all coming together, trending hashtags, trending stories, crowd chats, VIP influencers, and of course theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>